Hello and welcome to another episode of this MicroKorg tutorial. Um, so I decided to take the sound that I came up with originally and changed it a little bit. Um, first up, I kept the uh, first oscillator uh, on the sine wave and with a little bit of uh, uh, modulation on the wave there. Um, but oscillator 2, I decided to um, basically, I decided to change the, I'm trying to think what it is that I changed exactly. Um, anyways, uh, let's see how it sounds. I, I still have the ring modulator, I still have um, oscillator 2 tuned two octaves down from oscillator 1. Um, but let's see what it sounds like. What I did was to use some of the things that I talked about in the other episodes. Um, namely, I changed the filter and used a high pass filter with the following settings cut off at 5, uh, resonance at 50 of 51. Um, I applied a um, filter envelope, um, a little bit of attack, very short release. Um, moderate sustain and a little bit of uh, sorry, <laughs> um, little little bit of attack, um, short decay, moderate sustain, and a little bit of release, and um, some positive intensity, and it kind of gives it a little sort of wow uh, sound at the beginning of the of the sound. Um, and I believe that I made it, uh, so that the, um, basically the filter envelope, uh, didn't reset, um, to kind of make the, the sound change a little bit more. Um, on the amp side of things, I added a little bit of, uh, attack on the envelope, um, fairly similar settings in some ways to the filter except for a higher sustain and a higher release. Um, and in the amp settings I added distortion um, to give it some meat basically and no keyboard tracking although that might change depending on how the uh, um, how the patch comes along. So anyways, that's what, what's come out of it. There we go. Um, so now, uh, in this tutorial, I'd like to uh, have a look at the LFO more in detail and how it plays into um, the patch bay. Um, so at the LFO, we briefly had a look at it in one of the f earlier episodes. Um, you can have a uh, different shapes that you can use to affect different parameters. Um, probably, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I think probably a, a triangle wave sounds good. Um, in terms of key sync, um, I'm going to say no, and no tempo sync either. Um, and that, that looks like a good amount. Now, an LFO is useless unless you route it to to another part of the synthesizer. Um, so we have two LFOs that we can do that with. They both have the same settings. And then what you want to do next is go to um, patch one, patch two, patch three, patch four. Um, you have four different routing uh, menus. Okay, so we're going to go to patch one and see what the options are. So... They all have the same options, by the way. Um, the first knob controls um, the origin of the uh, modulation. Uh, you can see the first option is the filter 
envelope, you can use that as the as the modulation source, or you could have the amp envelope or LFO one, LFO two, uh, the velocity, namely how hard you hit the keyboard. Um, I th I think that means tracking, which means um, whether you're playing high notes or low notes. Um, the pitch bend and the modulation wheel. So those are your different modulation sources. The destination that you can affect with those modulation sources starts with pitch. Um, I believe that's the pitch of just the second oscillator. That is the first tonal control of the first oscillator. So the waveforms like um, square or sine or um, basically all of the waveforms except for the digital ones, you know, they have those two controls that uh, can affect the, the tonality of the uh, oscillator. So uh, one CT refers to the first control and this can this can be a modulation destination. Um, noise. Um, remember we had a, a noise generator. Um, so that can also be a destination. The cutoff frequency of your filter. Um, the uh, volume the, of the patch, the amp, basically. Um, and uh, if you're recording in stereo, the pan of your patch. Uh, and LFO2 as well. So all of the modulation sources could be routed to all of these modulation de destinations. And then the last knob, the last two knobs don't do anything. This knob is the one that, that uh, is important. This sets the intensity of this kind of relationship, of this uh, modulation um, patching that you've created. And it can be positive or negative. So let's see um, what the effect of some of these um, modulation uh, sources to destination relationships are. Um, I'm going to grab the LFO uh, one that we were just looking at before, and I'm going to route it to the tonal control of the first oscillator. I'm going to give it a negative intensity. Let's see what I have. Well, first of all, let's see without. That's pretty cool. Okay, quite like that. Um, Maybe a little bit more subtle. Oh, wow. That's actually... I think because we have the distortion and the um, ring modulation, I think that makes it even more unpredictable. Uh, let's see with positive what happens. A similar effect. Okay. So keeping the LFO one, let's see what happens if we route it to sec uh, the second oscillator pitch. So kind of like a vibrato or a subtle detuning based on um, how I play this. Okay. Uh, okay. Noise. Oh, that adds some noise. There we go. Okay, there we go. The cutoff. Let's see what happens. So LFO one controlling the cutoff, and that's a high pass filter. So let's see. Let's add a positive value. So as you can see, you have that a very typical filtering effect. Um, 
And the, I mean, the LFO is just a triangle wave, so it's in some ways very predictable. Um, the amp, so that probably will create a sort of, um, a sort of like a vibrato, or almost like an organ effect, like, you know, with the Leslie speakers. like turning the volume knob up and down um, in a very organized manner okay um, pan will will not try that because it I'm recording in mono so you won't hear the effect and LFO 1 can actually mod modulate LFO 2 which is pretty crazy um, okay so let's try a different modulation source um, uh, by the way, the, the way that that would be useful actually will 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 go super complex. So this is just one patch um, of four. So I can have LFO one modulating LFO two, and then on patch two I can grab LFO two. There we go, and then I can route it to something else. Let's say that control. And we'll just see what LFO2 is doing. So it's a sine wave. Yeah, well, we'll have it be like a square wave. And then, um, see, it's fairly slow speed. So I don't know what the, it's like LFO1 is kind of messing up LFO2. So let's see what that sounds like. So now on patch uh, two, we have that connection made. We'll add some intensity. We'll see what happens. So we have the that square wave happening there. Um, maybe we want to add some more intensity in the uh, uh, LFO1 to LFO2. So notice that when I turn that down, LFO2 has a pretty slow rate, but then if I turn up um, the intensity of this patching relationship, um, it affects LFO2 pretty significantly. Okay. Um, there we go. So that's basically, um, I could go on, but um, here you've seen how you can use the LFOs and how you can use the four patch uh, sections here to um, create interesting interrelations between different um, parameters of your synthesizer, just with a very basic, easy to understand concept of source, destination, and intensity. Thanks for watching.